In the final example from section 8.4, example 3 here, we'll find that the integral involves a form of the square root of x squared minus a squared. Now this isn't to be confused with example 1 where these two components are flip-flopped and you have the constant first. Now we have the variable form first and I think it's pretty clear that your value a is going to be 5. Uh, don't worry so much about this little domain restriction here. It's probably obvious to most students that that would have to be the case because this function here is only defined when x is 5 or bigger. Otherwise, it runs the risk of placing uh, negative numbers underneath the square root. So, question remains. What will be our trigonometric substitution here? Well, we've already done a sine. We've done a, a tangent. The only thing that's really left would be a secant. And x would be a secant of theta. Or specific to this problem, x would be 5 secant of theta. I'll explain once more exactly why the secant is our, our desired choice here in that if we were to take a look at the right triangle that comprises this problem, our angle theta. Now in order for secant to be x over 5, and that's what would happen here if we divided the 5 over, we have to think of secant as the reciprocal of cosine. So rather than adjacent over hypotenuse, we're thinking more of hypotenuse over adjacent. So those would be the positions of our x and our 5 there. And the Pythagorean theorem, of course, would say that we would take the hypotenuse squared, subtract the side squared. Let's see if I can make that a little bit more visible. We would have the, pi the uh, hypotenuse x squared subtracting the other side squared and that would end up being a match for this other portion of our integral. So as always we'll go ahead and make the substitution take the x out. In fact there's two different x's that that will substitute out here. So in our first x position that's squared we would have 25 secant squared theta minus 25 all divided by x, which is 5 secant of theta. We mustn't forget our dx term right here. So in taking this derivative, dx would be now the derivative of secant. Think about for a moment. Derivative of secant is secant times tangent. So we'd have 5 secant tangent. put our d theta over to the right. So this dx substitutes out and 5 secant theta tangent theta takes its place. Now it might appear that our integrand is quite busy but rest assured there are some things that we can see that that are going to make our lives a little bit easier. Namely the 5 secant thetas will cancel immediately. And then the factoring that can take place here uh, is typical with all the other problems. We can bring out a square root of 25, which, which is essentially going to be a 5. And then we're left with the square root of secant squared theta minus 1. And then we've got our tangent theta d theta. Nothing left in the denominator. And as with almost every one of these that uh, that you'll see, you've got a Pythagorean identity that, that can be performed right here with the secant squared minus 1. Secant squared minus 1 is indeed tangent squared, and the square root of a tangent squared would be tangent, so we would have a situation where the tangent and tangent would multiply and result in a tangent squared. Now, if you read a little bit of the preliminary information prior to this example in the notes or in your text, you'll realize that they're a little bit more careful in this particular problem when they discuss the square root of the tangent squared. Because by definition, on the interval from 0 to pi over 2 union with pi over 2 to pi, which is where we, we are analyzing the substitution function a secant of theta, Technically, the square root of that tangent squared 
must be the absolute value of tangent because tangent could potentially take on a negative value in those particular domain restrictions. Now the reason why I'm not making a real big deal in this particular problem is that if indeed the tangent were going to be uh, negative, um, we sort of have a way out here in the fact that since we're, we're going to end up squaring our tangent ultimately, that it's going to turn into a positive result. So it's not like I want you to pay a lot of attention to the end result of this of this particular sub, this uh, relationship here that I've underlined. It's just kind of important that we do mention it so that we, we sort of cover our bases. So we've got the positive tangent squared here, which if you think for a moment, it's not one of your easy trigonometric integrals. In fact, it's not among your formulas whatsoever. However, I wouldn't necessarily discount it as, as, as being a strange type of integral that you might have to take down the road on some type of a quiz, a, a possible exam, or possibly even the advanced placement exam. Tangent squared of theta just simply requires a, a, a quick little substitution, a trigonometric one, so that you can then integrate the results of that. And you might be able to guess the substitution that we're going to discuss. Uh, we kind of performed it already uh, once. We're, we're going to do it um, one more time, but sort of in reverse. Remember when we said the secant squared minus 1 was equal to tangent squared up here? You just pull it, that in reverse. Tangent squared is now secant squared minus 1. Now, <clears throat> You look at that and think, well, that, that makes it better. Well, of course it does, because the integration of secant squared is a, is a somewhat in, easy integral to take. It is tangent, and anyone can integrate 1. This is reintegration of a constant, so we are in pretty good shape here. So this result here will be 5 times the quantity. I'm just going to pop the 5 out in front and then integrate. Integral of secant squared is tangent and the integral of 1 is theta and then of course our plus c and if we were allowed to leave the answer in terms of theta I suppose we could finish right here but that is a definite no-no with the situation because the original problem as all of these problems will ask will have you deal with x and that's exactly the variable that we want to uh, sort of use in our final solution so we're going to have to figure out not only what the tangent of theta is, but what theta itself is. And that might be a little bit more of a challenge. So, as far as tangent of theta is concerned, well, taking care of him is pretty simple. And I don't know really why I'm redrawing this triangle, because I've already got him up here. But I thought I would just get him a little bit closer here to the action. But if you recall, in this particular picture up here, I wrote the square root of x squared plus 25 as the side opposite the theta, where 5 would be the side adjacent. We'll just perform your opposite over adjacent there, and you will have your substitution. And what we'll find out is the 5 and this 5 will indeed cancel, and we're just left with the square root of x squared plus 25. Like I said, the fraction square root of x squared plus 25 over 5 will take the place of this tangent. And we can see that these two 5's end up canceling away. Now, as far as the theta is concerned, I would suggest that you make this as easy as possible. There's a variety of ways. In fact, I, I can think of six ways off the top of my head that you could rewrite this theta function. You could use any one of the six trigonometric ratio setups. Um, what I noticed from, oh, say, a textbook approach is they typically will stick with the, the substitution that was initially made. And that substitution, I'll highlight up here in yellow once again, was this x equaling 5 secant of theta. So if I were to sort of pull that down here, x equaling 5 secant of theta, you can find out it's not very difficult to solve for secant of theta. You divide by 5. 
Well, it's probably equally as easy to solve for the theta. You would then just have to take the inverse secant of both sides, which the notation for that that we typically use as arc secant. Arc secant of x over 5 would be essentially the arc secant of the secant, which cancels each other out and just leaving you with theta. So you would just replace this theta with the arc secant of x over 5. But don't forget the fact that this 5 out in front would still have to distribute through and would serve as a coefficient of that arc secant. Now as much as you might be inclined to, to want to cancel the 5 out in front with the 5 here in the denominator, that would be an illegal cancellation. So I don't see anything else that can really be done here other than the fact there is a slight error in my answer. Hopefully you weren't caught up in that. I noticed that I put the wrong sign here between the x squared and the 25. That should be a minus because of the relationship that we had initially up here. And I've actually had it incorrect in this picture as well. Okay, so I will then circle this answer. I feel that we are now finally correct. And of course, you could check this very easily with your TI Inspire.